Okay, the next precision measuring tool I want to show you how to use for my transmission lab classes is a digital caliper um, along with telescoping gauges. So I've got a digital caliper here that we got through uh, Snap-on Bluepoint uh, part number MCAL6A. Um, I also purchased a Sterrett depth measuring adapter um, that we'll use here in just a moment. This digital caliper needs to be treated with care, kept clean. Uh, there's some special oil from Sterrett. It's just called tool and instrument oil. That's the same uh, oil they use when they make the, the tools and lubricate all the internal parts. And we can use that on a paper towel to uh, clean and lubricate uh, parts, all the parts of this um, digital caliper or any uh, digital caliper. Okay, so this uh, digital caliper has an on-off button right here, the red button. Just hit that to turn it on. It does have an automatic shut off feature, but in my class to preserve battery life, if you would please turn it off when you are done using it, I would appreciate it. The battery is under this cover uh, right here and just takes a small little, like a hearing aid uh, battery that uh, I'm able to find at grocery stores and I bought a whole bunch of them on uh, Amazon. Now, when this caliper when the caliper itself is closed all the way, if it does not read zero, then there's a zero button, this yellow button right here, to zero the digital caliper at that point. Now, right now we are reading in millimeters, and there's a metric, there's an English millimeter button right at the top here, this blue button that you can toggle back and forth between thousandths of an inch and actually a half thousandth of an inch. It has a little five that'll show up here in the half thousandths or in millimeters in the hundredth of a millimeter. And a hundredth of a millimeter is a finer increment than a thousandth of an inch. So if you're looking for the finest measurements you can get, then the hundredth of a millimeter is 2.54 times finer of a measurement than a one thousandth of an inch uh, measurement. Okay, this uh, digital caliper has a thumb screw right here where we can roll open and close the jaws of the digital caliper for fine uh, incremental movements or it has some little knurled edges here where we can pull the entire unit back and forth to open and close it uh, if we're making some uh, or if we're getting set up to make a big measurement. Now this digital caliper here can be used to make three different types of measurements. So if we roll open the jaws here we can measure how thick something is. So for example I've got this piece of steel right here I can come in, I can come in and roll in the caliper and make sure that you've got a nice tight uh, connection there. Uh, it, it should fit nice and flat against whatever you're measuring. Uh, we don't want it tilted forward or backwards as you're taking that measurement because if you look right here, our measurement is 12.76 millimeters. If I tilt it one way or the other, the number gets bigger. So you want to tilt it back and forth and make sure that you are reading the smallest number that you can find, 12.73 millimeters, 12.72. Um, and that take that as your uh, measurement. Okay, so we can use these caliper jaws here to measure how thick something is. But then here on the top of the digital caliper, we have these little uh, arms that stick up that we can use to measure the width of, say, 
that slot right there or how wide a hole is. And so if we close the caliper all the way, if we come inside of that slot right there and then roll out until it makes contact with the surface and then watch the numbers as I rotate this back and forth, I'm getting 9.5, 9.50, nine and a half millimeter, uh, 9.47. Find whatever the smallest number is, and that is your measurement. Okay, so we can measure how thick something is with these jaws. We can measure how wide something is with these little arms. And then on the other end of the caliper, we've got this extension here that as we move the, the base back and forth, that extension sticks out. And so we can use that to measure depth. Uh, let's say this bar that I have here was a solidly attached to this uh, workbench and I wanted to see how high it sticks up above the workbench. We can use this, this extending rod here to measure that, that height. But the problem is if you tilt the digital caliper forward, backward, side to side, your measurements can be incorrect. Uh, and so they sell a depth measuring adapter right here. This particular one is from Sterrett. I think I got it from Sterrett on uh, Amazon. But what we do is we bring the tip of our digital caliper and we put it down into this groove right here. There's a thumb screw off to the side that we need to open that up enough to get the digital caliper down inside. We want these edges here to all be lined up with each other. So if you set that on a flat surface like that and then tighten up the thumb screw then it acts as a nice base for taking those depth measurements that we're talking about here. It helps hold it at a 90 degree angle for more accuracy. So if I wanted to measure how deep this slot is or how high above the workbench this bar is, we can just lay the depth adapter across Oops, I didn't get my thumb screw tightened up enough. There we go. I hold down on that adapter, bring the digital caliper up all the way, make sure it is zeroed. There we go. It's a new zero point because we've got this adapter uh, connected to it for measuring depth. And then we're just going to run this down very slowly until it just makes contact. You don't want to force it down any more th than uh, that point. You just want it to run down until it makes contact. And that is your measurement. Now, I've got the face of the caliper facing away from me. I can't see what that is. And if I lift this up, it might change its measurement. So there's a thumb screw right here on the top of the digital caliper electronics that will lock that plunger from moving, then I can pick it up and take a look at whatever measurement I happen to get. So in this case, 12.83 uh, millimeters is what I read. So in the transmission lab here at, at Weber State in my classes, you are going to be taking measurements with, with digital calipers a lot. You're going to be measuring all kinds of shim thicknesses 
and depths and uh, widths and so on, the digital caliper is a absolute necessity for manual drivetrain and automatic transmission work. There are these come in a variety of uh, qualities and prices. Uh, this is kind of a mid-range one that I have right here. Uh, there are certainly higher quality ones and more accuracy. This only measures to one thousandth of an inch. There are others that measure to the ten thousandth. Um, there are some that have this built onto it so you don't have to worry about it uh, staying uh, on there with a thumb screw and um, various other options. All right, now, one other thing I wanted to show you how to use with this digital caliper is a set of uh, telescoping gauges. So let me take this depth adapter off. By the way, whenever in my class you are not using the digital caliper, let me unlock the lock here, let's turn it off and set it back in its case so that it won't get damaged. And then don't lay any parts on top of this. Uh, don't lay it in oil. If it gets dirty, wipe it off quickly. Uh, if it gets damaged, let me know. All right, so I'm going to set that off to the side uh, for a moment. And let's take a look at this uh, Blue Point telescoping gauge kit, uh, part number MTEE6. Uh, inside of this kit, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different telescoping gauges. These are automatic centering telescoping gauges. Um, if we take this one out right here, for example, the automatic centering or self-centering gauges have plungers on both sides that are spring-loaded. And this will center itself in whatever round bore um, it happens to go into. If it's flat, then you still have to center it the best you can uh, yourself. Now, some of these, the less expensive ones, only have a spring-loaded plunger on one side and it's solid on the other. Um, so... Uh, these, by far, are easier to use, and I would recommend the, the automatic centering ones. Now, once you get it down into a bore or a hole and you, to measure its uh, width, there is a thumb screw to lock those plungers in place and keep them from extending out. Uh, and then you can come in with your digital caliper and just measure from tip to tip, and that'll give you the width of whatever hole you couldn't uh, use the digital caliper with. So what I would like to do is measure the width of the slot in this bar right here with one of these telescoping uh, gauges. I'm just going to pick one I think might work. This little tiny one right here. And I'm going to make sure... Nope, it's too big. The, the base, the head of it won't even fit down in the slot. So I'll go with an even smaller one over here. By the way, there's a set of these called small bore gauges for measuring even smaller holes, or a small hole gauge, I mean. Um, so let's take this one, make sure the locking thumb screw is loose. It only needs to be turned just slightly to loosen it up. And then we'll put it down inside of that slot right there. All right. With it down inside the slot, you want to visually align it the best you can have a right angle with the rod that holds it in place with the surface that you're measuring and make sure that both plungers are, the tips of the plungers are contacting the surface you want to measure. And when you've got it set up like that, then we'll just lightly tighten the thumb screw on the end and pull it out. Now at that point, we can come in with our digital caliper, turn it on, make sure it's zeroed, and then come in. On the end of the digital caliper here, there's a sharp knife edge for getting into some small places, and then there's some flat surfaces here that are all aligned with the same edge. So 
where possible I use those big flat surfaces rather than the knife edge. I'll come in and just bring that down to where it just barely touches to where it feels like it was down in the hole here and take your reading whatever that may be. In this case 9.56 millimeters. So it takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of using one of these uh, telescoping gauges and then even more practice to come in and just bring it into where it just barely touches. I'm right-handed so I do a lot better job using my right hand and I still get 9.56 millimeters as the measurement for the width of this bore according to this telescoping gauge. So in, the, in my transmission lab classes here when you need to measure the width of a bushing or a hole and you can't get the digital caliper uh, down inside of it, you have to go to the telescoping gauges to take that measurement. Once again, when you're done taking your measurements, turn off the digital caliper, put the telescoping gauge back in the package where it goes, oh, release the tension on the plungers and put the plunger back in where it goes, wipe it off if it's covered with or if it's dirty and keep it clean and put everything away when you're finished.